I've said this dozens of times now, but one of my favourite things about Batman the Animated Series is the way that the creative team reimagined so many of Batman's classic foes, often giving them new, compelling, tragic backstories. When it comes to the new Batman adventures, my first reaction is almost always, yeah, it's fine, but it's nowhere near as good as the original animated series. Except for Mad Love. And Holiday Nights. And Over the Edge. Until I've practically listed every episode. That brings me to the topic of today's video, the new Batman Adventures episode, Growing Pains, and arguably the most tragic character in the entire DC animated universe, Annie. Now, if you've got this far, I'm going to assume that you're already very familiar with this episode. If you're not, well, here's your spoiler warning. Still here? Okay, so Growing Pains opens with Robin preventing a young girl from being violated by a biker gang, which is incredibly dark even by Beat Ass's standards. But she runs away from him and vanishes. Eventually, Robin catches up to her and finds that she is being pursued by a hulking man, but she has no idea why because she's lost her memory. She can't even remember what her name is. So Robin names her Annie and they set off to solve the mystery. After retracing her steps, Robin and Annie find themselves inside a chemical plant where they discover that the hulking man is in fact Clayface and that Annie is a small piece of him that wandered off and gained sentience. Clayface needs her to return to him or else he'll never be whole, but rejoining him will result in Annie being erased forever, effectively killing her. Don't worry, I'll save you. Save what? Don't you see? I'm not real. Yes, you are. No, she's not. There's such a wonderful philosophical question at the heart of this episode, and it's reminiscent of the BTAS episode, His Silicon Soul, in which a robotic duplicate of Batman thinks he's the real deal. Even after learning the truth, the duplicate Batman retains his morals and sacrifices himself to save the world from the supercomputer Hardak. Much like the duplicate Batman, when Annie absorbs some of Clayface's flesh and regains her memories, she doesn't suddenly change her entire personality. She's still Annie, the lost little girl that feels compelled to run. If she were some mindless globule, surely she'd comply with Clayface's demands and return to him. But no, she listens to her friend, who is desperately trying to save her life, and so she runs. That is, until she sees Robin, moments away from taking an acid bath at the hands of Clayface. It's at this point that she fights against her instincts. She stops taking orders and makes a decision for herself. Annie decides to save her friend and charges towards the danger, sacrificing herself to grant Robin a few precious moments in which to escape. The scene in which Annie is consumed by Clayface is gut-wrenching. Despite the fact that Annie chose this fate, we still see her fight and struggle as she is submerged in the clay flesh. Her face briefly pops out just before she's fully consumed, and her anguished expression is just awful to see. Even now, decades later, it still brings a tear to my eye. Then there's the way Clayface folds and contorts, groaning in agony as he absorbs her. It's all, frankly, really disturbing on multiple levels. If we compare this scene to another reabsorption scene from the episode Holiday Nights, the differences are incredibly stark. These clay children are very clearly unfeeling extensions of Clayface and completely different to Annie. If anything, these children enjoy horrifying the onlookers in the mall with seemingly no discomfort as they merge into one. There's no struggling, no weeping. It's all over in an instant. As an aside, I've always questioned the logic of having Holiday Nights as the first episode of the new Batman adventures, considering we hadn't been introduced to Tim Drake or seen Clayface's return by this point. Yet they're both featured prominently in the episode. This would have made a much better final episode for the series, if you ask me. One of the things I find so compelling about Annie, beyond the fact that I'm a sucker for a sad story, is that she's quite open to interpretation, with different people seeing different things in her character. I briefly talked about how she could be read as a trans allegory in an earlier video. Go watch that if you haven't already. But she just as easily can be read as a child fleeing an abusive parent, and I think that both interpretations are equally valid. Similarly, I find her visual design really interesting. She strongly resembles Natalie Portman's character in the movie Leon, which is a film loaded with child abuse and neglect. But the real subtle design nod that I love the most is her colour scheme, light red and yellow with black. It's very similar to Robin's and really emphasises their similarities. They were both essentially neglected children, 
left to their own devices without parental supervision. And it's easy to see why Robin is so drawn to her. Following the events of Growing Pains, Annie is never seen again. Well, sort of. In the Batman Beyond episode Mind Games, where gifted children are being kidnapped by a secret society, we get a blink and you'll miss it cameo for someone that looks like Annie in the list of missing children that have potentially been taken by the group. Is this confirmation that she returns in the future, or is it just a nice little easter egg for super fans like us? I lean towards the latter, but we'll never know for sure. Annie also makes a brief appearance in the second issue of Batman The Adventures Continue, although in this case it was simply Clayface impersonating her to try and deceive Robin. Robin was fully aware of this deception and reacted accordingly. Now usually when discussing a character from BTS I would cover their appearances in comic books or note the impact they've had across the entire DC universe, but Annie's a little bit different. While Annie is technically an original creation for the show, I would argue that she is the DCAU version of Lady Clay, the fourth Clayface who was created by the snake-worshipping cult Cobra to defeat Batman and the Outsiders. Now, just saying that out loud made me groan a little bit inside because, as abridged as that summation was, it's convoluted. I previously talked about how the writers on BTS took existing comic book villains and made significant changes to them in order to create more compelling characters. In this case, they scrapped everything except for the idea of a female Clayface, and they gave her their own trademark tragic twist. Side note, the new Batman Adventures tie-in comic, Batman Gotham Adventures, introduced two other Clayfaces, but I'll have to cover those in another video in the future. Let me know if you want to hear more about them. Her other comic book appearances include showing up in the Harley Quinn animated series tie-in comics. For those that haven't seen the show, their version of Clayface is one of Harley Quinn's primary accomplices, but he's a bit more camp and comical. In Harley Quinn the Animated Series, the real sidekicks of New Gotham special, we are introduced to this universe's version of Annie. Rather than slavishly replicating her TNBA origin, their version of Annie is a bit more light-hearted. When Clayface headed off to Las Vegas to pursue his dreams of stardom, he found that the only way he could get roles was to elicit sympathy by bringing his newly formed Clay daughter with him. In an interesting twist, it was Clayface that forgot about Annie once he started getting roles, and he wandered off without her, leaving her to fend for herself and develop a personality of her own. Now there's no ambiguity about this version of Annie, although she started off as a piece of Clayface, she has formed her own identity and is accepted as a separate person. In the main DC universe, a character very similar to Annie appears in Gotham Academy, Catherine Carlo. She is an extension of Clayface and describes herself as a sentient piece of viscoelastic protoplasm, but for all intents and purposes, she is Clayface's daughter. Physically speaking, she's a bit more monstrous with shape-shifting powers, but she can survive being absorbed by her father, Basil Carlo. She was originally sent to Gotham Academy to disrupt the drama teacher Simon Trent's production of Macbeth, but she swiftly made friends with the other children in the school and has joined in on their adventures. She has a more distinct personality and is also completely accepted as a separate entity to her father, even by Batman. Unlike other original creations like Harley Quinn or Rene Montoya, Annie hasn't exactly had a massive impact on the wider DC universe. She has, however, had a lasting impact on me, and I suspect many of you too. I know that some people don't view her as a separate person, but to me, there was never any doubt. She was a lost, confused little girl who gave her life to save her friend, and to me, it doesn't get any more human than that.